Hey, hey, developers. Today, we're going to talk about Gridsum and WordPress. So there is this movement, I would have to say, in the last few years where people are looking at our Vue.js, our React, our Angular, our single page application framework websites and saying, can we do better? And there's a lot of different ways where we're doing better. And one of these ways is this Jamstack. And this is how Gridsum is being described at. It's described as Gridsum makes it easy for developers to build modern Jam Jamstack websites and PWAs that are fast by default. And you're probably thinking, well, Vue is fast, right? Yeah, Vue is fast, but you are dealing with bundle sizes with the Vue, um, how it renders and dynamically creates the site for you. Um, when you have something like Gridsum, it's actually using pre-rendered static information. So it's taking all the information you put in there and it's pre-rendering the HTML and CSS so it should be fast. It's using automatic code splitting. It's using uh, pre uh, prefetching and progressive web apps. So it's using a lot of different patterns to make it very quick for your site. And this type of pattern is also seen in Gatsby and, and some, other, uh, some other projects out there. So today I wanna show you how you would set up Gridsum for your own personal site, um, for your company site, anything like that. So first uh, you need to go to gridsum.org and uh, start from there. But before we get too far, let me have a quick word from our sponsor. Let me tell you guys a little bit about MongoDB. So if you're not familiar with it, MongoDB is a document database. It's really scalable, it's flexible. Essentially, MongoDB stores data in these JSON-like documents, and it makes it really easy to make ad hoc queries. You can index, you can aggregate, aggregate the data pretty easily, and it's 100% free to use. So you can download it and use it on your own server, or you can use something like MongoDB Atlas and have it hosted in the cloud. So I want you guys to click on the link in the description below. You can learn all about MongoDB and download it 100% for free. So just click on that link in the description and thank you for my, once again to MongoDB. So if you aren't familiar with Gridsum at all, there is a great get started button right here. It'll tell you what you need to do. Uh, first you need to do this NPM install. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna go through that, but it's basically an NPM install dash dash global and you install the CLI. And then you can have the ability to create a project. Now, there's actually starter projects, and right now there is a couple of them. You click on starters up here. There's the default starter, default WordPress starter, and default contentful starter. So I'm going to show you taking the default starter and getting it basically to the point where it's a WordPress starter. So once you understand, I think this is a good idea to, to really understand it before you jump into the WordPress starter. So that's what I'm going to do. And then also we'll show you how you can add other things to it. What we're gonna to try to create is this website right here. So we have welcome to my blog. We have data that's coming from WordPress, from Markdown files, and from custom API. And so that's what Gridsum is really good for. So you can easily have it, uh, you can attach different data sets, data via plugins into Gridsum, and then that data will flow into your app and it'll have a GraphQL backend, which you can then use with inside your view templates to grab information and to display. And obviously GraphQL is, is really fast. And then when you build it, it builds it into static files and makes it really easy to then deploy to your backend. So you can see here, it's GraphQL, it's powered by GraphQL, which makes it really cool. So yeah, so we're gonna have these three different ones right here. We're also gonna probably use this CRUD API. I just uh, saw it on Reddit's web dev. So it looks like a cool way to create a, a, an API. So we're gonna use that. And then uh, we're gonna connect it to our WordPress site. So I have a, a local WordPress site. I'm not gonna get into how to install WordPress. There's plenty of tutorials out there. This is just running in my local host and um, on a server I have in my house at 192.168.180. And I have three posts in it. <laughs> test does this work, Eric rules and hello world. But you can see those three links are showing up here. If you click on them, you could see here, I have this slug right here, 2019, 812. So it has the URL routes in here and it brings up the actual content from it. Uh, by the way, I didn't do any CSS customization in this. So things look a little ugly, but I thought for the purpose of this demo, that's fine. Here's the Eric rules post. Here's the hello world. You can see the markdown files I put just I didn't uh, have any sub routes here. I just put in post two. That's the route. And then from this custom API, I just have hacker slash eight. So I'll show you that. And that's coming from the CRUD PIO. 
All right, so I showed you everything we're going to get started with. Here is the website right now. So I'm going to close this one. And then, by the way, we'll have a brief look at Nellify at the end and deployment. So here's our website. Not too much. And by the way, I'm going to go really quickly uh, through this. So um, feel free to pause at any time. And also the code will be a link in the description below. And also I put some of my favorite courses, things like that. You know, feel free to click on those. And uh, you can also check that out. Okay. So first thing we need to do is I have my terminal open here. And uh, we're going to start with just let's see if we can get basic markdown working in our website right here. So uh, to start off with, I click on plugins, and then I could just search for Markdown. So there is one called Remark, which is the one that uh, that everyone seems to be using. It's the one that's preferred here, and it's all you need to do is this npm install. So I went ahead and already did that. So in my terminal here, I could just do uh, npm. Let's see here. If I would just copy and paste it here, copy. And then I could just paste it, and then I would hit enter. But once again, it's already done, so I don't have to do that. And also, it doesn't mention it here. I realized that you also need to install the GridSum source file system. If you don't have that, it'll give you an error, which I don't know why it doesn't do that automatically. But so npm i, and then this GridSum dash source system, which is the other one that you need. Cool. So after you have those two installed, then you need to go into your gridsum config.js file. And there, this little thing right here, I'm going to lower this, is the plugins. And this plugins is where you put your plugins. So we can actually just copy and paste this plugin here and update it. And actually, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this from another screen just to save a little bit of time here. Because I already have it configured. One second. And here, okay, so here it is right here. So I have my gridsum source file system. Um, essentially, the same thing you have in here. I have the options. I'm going to put my path in source pages markdown, and then you put star star slash star dot md, kind of the same way they had it here. This type name is what's going to be uh, our part of our content that we get inside our templates here. So if you look inside this template, this is the for the GraphQL collections should be added here. So whenever we have a collection, when we're doing a plugin, this collection name is part of, is the same as the type name. So we're going to type name post, and that'll be in this uh, templates folder. Just a quick uh, shout, a quick note here: we have components. This is where components are, layouts or like components that you can kind of overlay all your other um, pages. Pages in Gridsum is each page is a route. So slash about is one. Sl and then the root is the index. And then templates is where you put your collections are. And they have these nice little readmes in here in case you forget what they are. Um, by the way, I already created the website too. This is a blank Gridsum website from scratch. I just followed the starter. If you go back to Gridsum here and get started, I just typed in the Gridsum create my Gridsum site as the starter project, not the WordPress one, just the ba basic one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and, and to start it, you go get some develop, and that will go ahead and start it. So I'm going to go back to my config here. Uh, I didn't save it, so I got to save it. And then this will have everything in the grid sum config here. This will have everything in, this will be everything we need to start with our markdown. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. If I go, I, I want to put in the pages. I'm going to create a new folder called markdown. And then inside Markdown, I'm going to just create a new file called eric.md. And inside this file, this is what this is where I'm going to write my uh, Markdown. So I'm going to put in dash dash. I can put paths. I don't know. I'll call this post one. And then uh, date. And I'll call this 2019 10, I don't know, 0912. And then here the rest of it, I can then write a markdown. So I'll call this new markdown post. This is markdown. Yep. Um, and then I'll save it. So now I have my markdown post. I saved it. It's now inside here. 
Um, and then I also have it, um, I don't have a template set up yet, but I have this markdown. So now I need to create the template. So I do new file here. And then uh, since I called it inside our config here, I called it post. I need to create it inside the template. So I'm going to create a new file here called post.view. Um, and then in the post.view, I'm just going to copy and paste, and I'll show you guys what I'm doing here. So, so this post.view here is the template. I have the layout, which is the, the default layout right here. Um, I created some, there, there is uh, some markdown body here, but uh, don't worry about that. That's just some CSS. Now, the biggest thing is I have this page query, and this page query is uh, where we're going to, this is a special option with inside Gridsum where you can actually put your GraphQL queries. So that's really helpful. So let's make sure that our GraphQL is working. So we can go to localhost. 8080, and if we put slash here, explore, now we have the GraphQL Explorer. And actually, I have some other old ones in here I had before. But if I do this, I can now look at all the data I have. So I have all pages, and then I can look at paths or context. That Now we have this post, which is new, and we have all posts. So if I do all posts, and uh, I hit, I can this is uh, this will show us everything we have inside all posts. So it should show my markdown file here. If I go node, now I can see here. Cool, I have concepts, excerpts, headings. Uh, let's just look at the the content. Cool. So here's the content right here. This is all from the markdown. So if I go back into the markdown file and my page is markdown, I can also I don't know add a title to title, which I'll call uh, Eric3. Oops, I have one problem here. I just noticed I need one more dash. Put one more dash here. Save it. And then I'll run it. And if I run this title here, and I restart this. Now if I look here, I should have a title. So now I have title in here. Now I can get the title, which is really cool and the content. So now since I know that I can get it here and uh, it's in this explorer, if I go back to our templates here and look at our post.view, we have this query right here. So this is just a GraphQL query. So if I go back inside here and I post it, I can actually bring this up and I can add variables. And this means this is a variable called path. So I can set the path inside right here. I'm going to call it path, and I'll just put in, um, we know it's it's a path that we have, so I don't know, page one. Oops, I actually put it in the HTTP headers. Let me put it in the query variables. Try that again, and I'll play it. Cool, now here's the document. So let's see if this works. So we tried it out. Now we should be able to go to page uh, post one and see if it opens up. So I'm going to come back here to our site, uh, which I'll move this and I'll just go to slash post one. Cool. It looks like it worked correctly, uh, which is good. All right. Let's see if we can look at the code one more time to see what's happening here. So it's just really simple. I put it in the templates under post. I have this page dollar sign page. Whenever I use the page query. Um, this is the GraphQL query command. You use the page to get what's emitted from this. And then do page.post because this is a post. And then the title. And we know the title is being returned back from that GraphQL query that we did. So I'm just putting the title and then the content. Um, since the content is HTML, if you saw that earlier, well, I use this v-html. And this will make sure it displays as HTML on the page itself. And also, I can do meta info. That's a way I can change the title of the actual web page. So I'll put that as the title here. And that's why um, this, this markdown is, is set to the correct title there. All right, so that, that's all I wanted to show with markdown. Um, let's go ahead and move over to WordPress. So to do the WordPress, I'm going to go back to the config file. 
and just for the sake of time, I'm going to copy and paste another GridSum WordPress. Uh, first, if you're following along at home, you can actually go to the GridSum website, click on plugins at the top, and type in WordPress. I chose the first one here, this GridSum slash source WordPress. And then I did the NPM install, source WordPress. I already did that. And then I kind of copy and pasted this whole uh, plugins, this whole object here, which I'll go ahead and do. Um, let's see here. Make sure I get it from the other page. So if I go back down here, I paste it. So here it is with missing the beginning bracket. So you can see here, what, what I'm doing here is I do grid sum source WordPress. I did the NPM install that already. And then um, to get it working with WordPress, it's pretty simple. Um, inside your WordPress site, go into your dashboard and then click on plugins. And you need to download two plugins. One is the ACF to REST API and the advanced custom fields. So if you go to any of those, um, webs, if, if you go to either one of those on GitHub, you see here, here's the ACF to REST API. It has, ins I'll um, make sure there's a link in the description below, but it's you're using the advanced custom fields endpoint for the WordPress API. Um, so exposes the advanced custom field. So you have to have both of those installed. To do the installation of these, um, all you need to do is copy the ACF to REST API into the WP Contents plugins folder. If you're familiar with WordPress, that shouldn't be too hard. You might have to SSH or FTP in. Um, I try to search for it in the plugins network by just like searching for ACF or advanced custom fields. Um, and it didn't show up in the plugin directory. So you might have to actually uh, go to the GitHub website and then install them manually just by downloading it, um, following the instructions on the GitHub. Um, so they both show up in your plugins inside your WordPress site. But once you have both the ACF to REST API and advanced custom fields, by the way, by default, if you click settings here, it'll set it to version three. And that's the one you want it to be. It should be already in version three. If it's not, then set it to version three. Uh, another weird, weird gotcha I had when I set this up. Um, by the way, this is a default WordPress out of the box site. If you look at the uh, structure I have, I have like year, month, day, which uh, if you don't have the year, month, day, so you can see here, here's my post route. You may want to change this to match what your site is. Um, if you're using different tags, you might have to do that. If um, this is going to just assume you're just doing a, a vanilla WordPress site, but you might have to change these based on your configuration. Uh, one weird other thing I had to do, since I'm using this locally, um, I had to put slash index.php when I didn't do that. I got an error when I started up. So make sure if you're just testing locally, you might have to put slash index.php. So this is the website URL for my WordPress website and then slash index.php. Everything else is default from the configuration that we see inside here that it recommends. So that's all I did there. So let me save it. And then always every every time you stop and, and redo something, you need to stop and restart the grid some develop. And just keep in mind, what happens is every time you build your site with grid some, it'll get the latest information from your WordPress site. However, um, you need to if you make new posts in your WordPress site, you'll need to rebuild your graph, uh, your Gridsum site. Otherwise, your new posts won't show up. It just doesn't automatically show up. There is a way of getting past that by inside your WordPress. You can set up uh, a hook to like your deploy, like Nellify, that'll automatically rebuild in every new publish. I'll I'll show you guys how to do that. It's not too bad. So by the way, you'll notice right here it says loading data. This should show up when you restart your server. If you get an error, then you did something wrong or something changed. All right, so since this is now should be connected up, I have a whole new world of things you'll see in the in the GraphQL Explorer. So if I open up the GraphQL Playground now, I'm just gonna do a new one here. And I look through here. Now I have WordPress post, WordPress page, WordPress attachment, WordPress WP block, author. So now I have all these other kind of hooks to get into. So. I also have all, 
all WordPress posts. So I'll look at all the WordPress posts. If I do, remember every time you're in the GraphQL Explorer or Playground, you can hit Control Space if you're on Windows. Um, I believe there's another hotkey. I forgot what it is on Mac, but you can basically just find out what options you have. So remember, anytime you're also working inside GridSum, it's always Edge's node, I've noticed. So keep that in mind. And so now I can say, okay, what is the titles of everything that's come out? I say, cool. So you see here on the right-hand side, does this work? Eric's role, hello world. Those are the three titles. If we go back to our WordPress site of our three posts, does this work? Eric's rule and hello world. So those are the three titles. So now going back to our site here, we have, we set up routes. We set up the type name. Remember this type name refers to what you need to create inside the template for your GraphQL collections. So I need to create a new template to match this grid com, grid sum configure, which is called uh, type name WordPress. Now you can also see um, it's the type name is WordPress, but if you look in the GraphQL Explorer, there's WordPress post. So the plugin actually adds the post to the end of it. There's actually ones, um, if we go back down here, all there's WordPress post, page, author, block, post tag. These are all collections that are added from the, from the WordPress plugin that we installed. So we just want to do a WordPress post. So we're going to do a new template. I'm going to call it wordpresspost.view. And I'm going to copy and paste from my other screen here just to save us time again. Um, one second. Okay. And I actually had some other things. I'm going to delete this out, delete this out, delete this out. So I'm going to keep it really simple. So here is our, our query. So we're going to go through our post. We're going to get the WordPress post. We're going to grab the title and content, and we're going to grab, grab the categories, ID, title, and path. Uh, we don't really need the categories. We're just really using the title and content. Um, so I'm going to delete that for right now. So now let's see if it works. Um, since we just added a new one, I always like to stop and restart just to make sure it works. And uh, if we go back to here, let's say after it's done running, we can then, let's take a look at what the path is. Let's see here, path, path. If we click play here, uh, cannot find, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just do a quick um, refresh here to see what's happening. Oops, I actually press all right here, so that doesn't belong there. There we go, so the path, is 2019 test does work. So I can actually test this to see if it works. So I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna open up another document here and put in the correct URL and open it. Cool, so here's my test does this work. So it's definitely grabbing it from WordPress. Great, so now we have it talking to WordPress um, in this template. Now we'll show you a way to list all the files on our homepage, we'll do that in a second. Um, but this, yeah, this is same thing kind of we did before. We're just grabbing page.wordpresspost.title and the content. And then uh, we're doing this query right here. So now we know it's talking to WordPress. So finally, the last thing I wanted to show you guys is how to do like a custom API to our server. So to do that, we're going to uh, create something new. So I'm going to create a new one called... Uh, I'm going to use this CRUD PIO and I'm going to create it, I don't know, hacker. And now here's our new hacker API. Uh, I'm going to create, I'm going to use JSON insert. And I can just put whatever I want in here. So the first one, I think I'm going to call it hacker info. I'm just going to put hacker ving. Okay, so it created four of them. Actually, can we create five? All right, so it created all of them inside here now. So now when I do the git from this new git endpoint, it should do it correctly. So to do a custom API, I go to gridsum.server. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, do an async call and grab the information we need. So I'm going to go to the top here 
and well let's just do it right here um, import axios um, actually we'll do uh, just real quick we'll do a const just for ease of use here instead of importing in it we'll do const axios equals require um, axios And to do this part, we're going to do a data. So we're going to get data, and we're going to wait an axios.get. And this is where we're going to paste in this URL here. So we got it pasted. There it is. So now uh, we can, once we get the data, we need to go ahead and do some things with it. So let me. I'm going to copy and paste some info in here just to make this a little quicker. All right, so this is what we're doing. So we're getting the data from our hacker endpoint. We're going to create a new content type. This is called add content type. Type name's hacker info. The route's going to be hacker slash uh, colon ID. And then we're going to essentially, um, which I'm missing a, the end of my for loop here. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna for I'm gonna go through this for loop here of all the data, and I'm gonna create new nodes. That's gonna have the ID, title, which is by the way, you always make sure you have the title, otherwise I, I was I was getting errors if I didn't have title. And then anything other than ID and title, I just put in fields. I tried putting this info outside the fields and I was getting errors, so keep that in mind. And so this is gonna grab our info hacker info. Actually, we're we're called it hacker name name and this will be hacker ing so I'm gonna save that and then I'm gonna stop uh, and restart so I'm gonna restart it and see if I get any errors I do oops I need to make since I did a wait here I need to make this async async and I'm gonna restart this Oh, and I got another error. Cannot find value Axios. It should be with an S at the end. I'll try one more time. Third time's the charm. I guess not. Um, did it not save? Make sure I save it. I'll try it one more time. Oh my goodness. Uh, add content type is not defined. So this should be defined. Let me see what I have wrong here. Oops, this is actually outside the block. Let me move it in underneath here. And then we start it. OK, we started without any errors. So once it restarts, we can check to see if it's okay. We'll look, go back to our Explorer. Um, and now we should have an all hacker. So we don't have our hacker. Let me refresh the page. And we should have, yep, here's hacker info. So now we have all hacker info. And from there we have edges. And then from there we have nodes. And now we have title info path. Um, so if we look at title, cool. Now we have the title is the name of the person, which we just hard coded as John Smith. If we do info. Now we have programming. So that's the ing words. It looks like bypassing, backing. All right. So now we have this in here. Now we can go in. We added this type as hacker info. So we should be able to create a template for hackers info. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it hackerinfo.view. And once again, I'm going to copy and paste from another page. Everything I need in here. So this is really similar to the other ones. I have this page at hacker info. I'm doing a query on hacker info. I'm passing the path in and to get the title info. So if we go back here and we look at the path that we have, the path hacker nine, so I can just make sure that works. So I just need to go back to my grid sum site, which I think I may have closed. 
uh, yeah, let me go back to our right here. Make sure you go to Hacker9. Cool. Now we can see this is posting from the endpoint that we got that our custom endpoint from CredPIO. All right. So the last thing I want to do is just display all the posts on the front page. So that shouldn't be too bad. Um, once again, I'm going to copy and paste this from another page. I'm going to index.view. I'm going to go back to the top. I'm just going to delete everything. And now I'm going to paste in mine. And see what here is? I'm just doing this layout here. And then from here, I'm doing for loops. So I did a v4. I'm going through, here's the, the queries that I'm grabbing uh, for the, um, I'm, these are the queries that I'm doing for uh, GraphQL. So the all WordPress posts that we saw earlier, the all posts that we saw earlier from our markdown, and then the all hacker info. So that should be all three of them. I'm gonna save it. And then what I'm gonna do, once again, I'm gonna stop and restart it. And this, what this is saying is I'm gonna loop through everything in the WordPress post edges, grab the node. This G link is the way you do links in GridSum. That's how you do like your, your linking. And I'm gonna use the node title and the node path is gonna be the link to the, each one of them. So let's see what that looks like. Cool, so here's from WordPress. We have test does this work. If we click on it, it goes to the right page. Here's our markdown file, the only one we have. And then finally, from our custom API, we just had the same name on each one of them. But if you look at each one of them, they have different things in them, quantifying, indexing, cool. And then I also added in just an output of all WordPress post page info, and it tells us how many pages we are. You can do pagination, which is kind of beyond the scope of this, but that's that's something else you certainly could do. So that's it. That's all I had for this GraphQL. Uh, one other thing, if you wanted to deploy this in Nellify, so you can do grid sum build. And what that does, it actually builds it to a destination folder, dist folder in plain HTML and CSS. If I'm using something like grid sum, or excuse me, Netlify. Netlify. Someone told me the other day I was mispronouncing because I didn't net. I didn't pronounce the T in Netlify. Um, but here's the disk folder. I have um, my HTML, CSS, index files, everything you needed. I can do. I can then take this account and then push it up to GitHub. So I already did that. Um, I already did that earlier. Here is my Gridsum account. I already pushed this up, this grid some WordPress that you'll see in the link in the description below. So let's say I wanted this on Netlify. I can go here. Um, by the way, you can go to netlify.com, sign up for a free account. Okay, so now I can uh, I can sign to one of my GitHub accounts. I'm going to do grid some WordPress. And let's see, yep, master. And the build command is grid some build. And the publish directory is dist. So I'm going to hit deploy site and see if it works. So it's in queued. If I click here, I can see it's trying to deploy. So we'll just give this a second. OK, after it's done building, uh, one other thing you can do, uh, that's pretty much it. For once, it's, it, once you set that up, it'll build it. And actually, it'll deploy a site for you. But if you go to deploy settings, there is, a, there is hooks. So I can add a build hook. Let's call it a uh, post hook. Um, I'll do it on every time you build to master. It, every time it'll do is it'll build to master when it gets hit. And you get this URL here. And what you can do with this URL is I can have it this URL be hit from our my WordPress site every time the a new post goes out. So it tries to rebuild again. Um, you can add in some code into your WordPress site to do that. And then that what that what we can do from there is that anytime you create a post, it'll rebuild your Gridsum site, which means it'll get the latest version of the post that you just created rather than you having to stop and restart, uh, stop and rebuild your Gridsum site every time you create a new post. 
So that's just a kind of handy tool tip there. Uh, to do that, um, what you can do is, here I'll move this over. This is me just logging in using PuTTY into my WordPress site. If I go into my functions, uh, functions.php and then go all the way to the end, uh, you can create uh, this. I'll just copy and paste it here. Maybe. Um, this right here, this add func add action, which is under save posts. Anytime a save post happens um, when you publish, it'll go ahead and auto save. And then you can do this, this Netlify build hook. So this is where I would take that hook that was just created here and I would copy and paste it in there. So that way, next time I create a post, it'll automatically get deployed to where I need it to be. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I'm not going to go through it too much more. Since I'm using a local WordPress server, my build's going to fail. <laughs> uh, my deploy is going to fail. It failed because it tried to grab uh, the the post from WordPress from my local server at 192.168.80, and that's never going to work. But that that's real quickly how you how you kind of front to back how you start with Gridsum. If you guys like this type of tutorial, make sure you put a comment in the description below. Let me know if there's anything you in the future you want me to do. This is actually based on a comment I got from the last time I did Gridsum. People wanted me to do a CMS, and here it is connected to WordPress. Thanks. Uh, oh, yeah, one other thing. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that there is a starter pack for WordPress starter, and it's essentially the same thing that I did here with this whole a tutorial except that the um, the github it has a few more things so if you go to the source um, and you use this this one it has templates for category and post tag it also assumes that you're doing things like with featured media and tagging which is just essentially these new queries that you can do and if you have your WordPress set up for categories and tags and featured media then you can use this this uh, template and it makes it just a little bit easier for you. But otherwise, this this tutorial is basically uh, all you need to get started. So I appreciate it. Thanks. Take care. Bye.